Good morning. Welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me. The word that I have that the Lord placed on my heart to share with his people is this. Don't doubt God. Have faith in the promises that he has shown me. This morning, I was looking for another verse, but he led me to Proverbs 22. And it says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And that is such a key verse because when we bow down and submit our lives to God, when we die to this flesh and we live in the spirit, we live for him every day. We sacrifice things that we want to do for his ways. And even though when we don't understand everything, we just trust him. He rewards us for that. That is true humility. You know, people look at humility about the brands you wear and the homes you live in. That is not true humility. True humility is submission to Christ. It's submitting your life to him and letting the Holy Spirit lead you, trusting that he knows best. And he says, I will reward you with that. He says, because by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches. Did you hear me? Riches, honor, and life life more abundantly in him, right? And so I want to remind you to keep your faith in him, to keep your trust in him. It says, thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them. We want to keep our thoughts and our minds and our heart pure. We don't want to be a part of slander. We don't want to be a part of gossip. The Bible says the wicked do those things, but the righteous, we are very guarded in what we speak. We guard our tongue and we don't just say whatever we want to say, but we allow the spirit to cleanse us and purify our heart. So when we speak, our words edify, our words encourage, our words lift up, they give life. They don't speak death. The wicked, when they speak, there's nothing to be gained from it. There's no wisdom. There's no edification. There is nothing but disruption, discord, chaos. It's not productive. But when God's children, when we speak, we release life. Hallelujah. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will, he will not depart from it. Mothers and fathers who have prodigals, who are raising teenagers, and it seems like everything you do, they want to question, right? Everything you do isn't right. Everything you do, they have a better way of going about it. God says, you instruct them in the Lord. Trust God. Release them to God. Keep doing what he instructs you to do, knowing that nothing will come back void. His word will not return back void. And his word is anchored in your children when you instruct them in the Lord. This is the importance of instructing your children in the Lord when they're young. So that when they go off into the world and the world tries to put all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of uh, instructions within them. They've already been rooted in the Lord. They've already been dedicated to the Most High God. There's no going back for them, right? Because you have entrusted them and dedicated them to the Lord. And what you dedicate to the Lord, He will preserve. He will keep. For it is not by might, nor is it by power, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. I feel that in my soul for somebody. Stop worrying. You've done all you can do. Keep praying and release it to God. Give him praise for the victory already that your prodigal's coming home. Give him praise that your child will be just fine. Your child will grow up and will be productive and successful. Your child will be everything God has called them to be. Decree, declare, speak life. This is a word to somebody. Stop calling things as you see them. And start being a, a child of God and calling things as you want them to be. Start decreeing, declaring life over dead situations. 
if your marriage isn't what you want it to be, speak life over. My husband is a mighty man of God. My husband is so loving and kind and generous. My husband will serve the living God. My husband is growing in Christ. My children do serve the Lord. My children hear instruction. My children hear the voice of the Lord and they will not follow another shepherd. My children are anchored in Christ. My children are the head and not the tail. My children will go forth and do great things in the world for the kingdom of God. God, they will reflect the light of his glory. Hallelujah. You've got to pick up your rod and begin to speak life over your dead, dry bone situations. You are the one that God has entrusted and given the power, just as he told Moses. What are you waiting for? Remember when Moses got to the Red Sea and he was like, Lord, I've done everything that you have told me to do. I've led your people out of the slavery. I've instructed them, but now we are at a crossroad. We are at the Red Sea. What do you do? Are you gonna leave us here to die? And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, pick up your rod and pointed to the Red Sea and instructed, you have to pick up your rod. It is time for you, to, for you to grow up. Some of you have been on milk way too long. The Bible says you should be on meat by now. Some of you have been on milk for so long. You've been in the church 40 years and you still haven't grown in the knowledge and the wisdom of Christ Jesus. It is time to pick up the sword. It's time to learn of him. It's time to learn of his ways because in his word is power. There is instruction, but once he instructs you, once he trains you and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it is time to pick up your rod and speak to the red seeds of your life. So I didn't even know that I was going to go there, but how many of you know it wasn't by accident? Somebody needed to hear that. Hallelujah. It says in verse 17, and again, I'm in Proverbs 22, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is pleasant. It is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. It is a pleasant thing to know the word of the Lord and abide in his word. Because the Bible says, if you abide in him, he will abide in you. And anything you ask, you shall have. But what is the key? You have got to abide in the word who is Jesus Christ. Because if you don't abide in him, you're not going to be aligned to his will. And you're going to be out here asking for things, desiring things that do not align to his word. Therefore, you cannot have what you want because you're not in connection to the word. But if you know the word and you apply the word and you ask and abide in him, he will give you those things because you are aligned to his word, his will. As it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth for those who know the will of God. You got to get in this book. Hallelujah. He says, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day and even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? He's saying, I have told you so many blessings and so promise, so many promises, so many excellent things in the word of God. How do you not know it? You know, a lot of people say, you know, I, I just cannot read the Bible. I just go to sleep. That's spiritual warfare. You begin to get tired. You need to ask the Lord before you even open up this book to pray, to energize you, to give you life, to receive the living word, that you will thirst and hunger for his righteousness and he will do it. And listen, if you are not a reader, you don't have to read. You can listen to the audio version. Hey guys, my phone cut off. But what I was just saying is basically, if you don't like to read, there are other means. You can listen to the audible version of the Bible. You can listen to audio books. The reason why I'm able to consume so many books in a month is because A, I love to read, but I do so via Audible and um, reading because I like to just flip through the pages. But the Audible, I can listen to on my way to work. I can listen to when I'm coming back throughout the day. And it allows you to consume high amounts of knowledge and books. And a lot of people, that's how they consume so much information is because they read so much, um, but they also listen to audiobooks. So that is a secret tip for someone that wants to gain knowledge. They want to gain wisdom. 
listen to the Bible audible. Our faith comes through hearing, which is a powerful way to consume the word of God, right? If God says so, it's so, right? Um, so let that be your encouragement. Don't let the ability that you have a difficult time reading stop you from gaining knowledge. There are so many ways you can listen to the uh, Bible or listen to books. Um, Audible, I get the uh, subscription and I get a book a month and it helps me to make sure that I'm listening and I'm reading. And um, I just love it because I can um, also gain free books by doing that. So it's a good program if you're interested in doing it. But yeah, um, that's all that I have for you all. I've got to get inside and get to work. Uh, but I hope that this word helped you. Happy Wednesday Wisdom. And I will see you soon, God willing. Um, take care. Bye.